All right, so let's go ahead and let's pray together uh, before we get into God's word here this morning. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, I'm so glad that we can come together, so glad that uh, we are able to uh, worship you together. And there is something unique about um, believers coming together, seeking uh, their God, uh, seeking to understand, to know him better, to meet with him here. And thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit that you've given us, you've given every believer. He says that he dwells within us. And uh, we are so blessed for, for the gift of your Holy Spirit. And we ask today that you would speak to our hearts through your spirit, through your word. And Lord, I also just pray, Lord, for me, you'd help me. You'd help me to communicate your heart to your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So if you're able to, why don't you stand with me? Uh, it's kind of our habit here at Derby Creek when we, we uh, go over the scripture passage here that we're going to talk about. We stand in honor of the word of God. So, um, hey, let's read it in unison today. Let's read it together, okay? So uh, let's read on here. Ephesians 4, 25 to 32. Therefore, having put away falsehood, let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and give no opportunity to the devil. Let the thief no longer steal, but rather let him labor, doing honest work with his own hands, so that he may have something to share with anyone in need. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up, as fits the occasion, that it may give peace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. All right, that's the word of the Lord. Have a seat. So we are, uh, I mentioned last week, you know, we've enrolled in a class together. Right? We're studying about the Holy Spirit. We call it Holy Spirit You, and we could, be, we could be in this class the rest of our lives. This might be the longest series I've ever done. Yeah. Um, <laughs> be my last series ever. Yeah. Uh, but there's just so much. I mean, when you, when you think about uh, the person of the Holy Spirit and uh, so many different passages that speak about him and, and communicate to us uh, how he interacts with us, right? Um, Last week we talked about we talked about how the indwelling spirit really is a matter of life and death, right? His presence in our lives, it, being within us, really means that we know God, and uh, and that's that's important. That's that's uh, that's eternal life. That's uh, ha that's how you have a relationship with God. And when that happens, when you put your faith in Christ, we are given the Holy Spirit as a gift um, within us. And so um, today, uh, you might have caught. There are some of the verses in this uh, passage there right towards the end where it says, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, right? Do not gr grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. And so ultimately we want to talk about, well, you know, what does that mean? How can we grieve the Holy Spirit of God? And, and certainly, you know, so this is one of those things where it's a do not thing, and so we need to learn, well, how, how then do we grieve the Spirit of God so that we cannot do that? Um, and, and, and just, just out of, out of, to preface this, you know, if, if, if a person has an authentic relationship with God, in us is the Holy Spirit, and that Spirit within us wants us to do the things that are pleasing to God. Right, and so because uh, you can start off and say, well, you know, well, w what does it really matter? I mean, in one sense, uh, if if I'm a Christian, that means I'm, um, I, I've, I've in a sense uh, escaped the wrath of God because I I'm trusting in what Christ has done, the, and God's wrath that should have come on me fell on Him. So, hey, I'm I'm, I'm free and clear. So can I just live however I want? Right, which would be kind of a logical question, right? But uh, we know from lots of places in Scripture that 
um, a true relationship with God doesn't think about things that way. If I, if I have an authentic relationship with God, if the Spirit of God dwells in me, I really do want to do what God wants me to do. And we never perfectly carry that out, but that desire is there. And then over time, we see progress, if you will, right? We see changes, changes in our lives. You know, this week I was um, reading through some of the passages in Acts. You know, we just finished up this reading plan as a church and through the book of Acts. And one of the things that struck me was, oh, I, I just got to go to it. I don't want I will not do it justice. And if you got your Bible or use one of the Bibles there or pull out your device, take a look in Acts chapter 19. Um, they should make a movie about this scene. This is really incredible. Take a look in Acts chapter 19. Okay, so start in verse 11. The heading in my Bible says, The Sons of Sceva. Okay, it says, and, and God was doing extraordinary miracles by the hands of Paul, and so that even handkerchiefs or aprons that had touched his skin were carried away to the sick, and their diseases left them, and the evil spirits came out of them. Then some of the itinerant Jewish ex exorcists undertook to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, I adjure you by the Jesus whom Paul proclaims. Okay, so, so what's going on here is these guys are like, hey, this is pretty cool what Paul's doing, man. He, you know, this, the, he's, he's, he's casting out all these demons, and uh, I think we'll try that, the, the way he's doing it, right? And so, <laughs> I just love this. So, so, so these guys, these Jewish exorcists, are talking to this person that has these evil spirits and, and, and tells them to get out of there, right? In verse... Um, Verse 15, it says, The evil spirit answered them, Jesus I know, and Paul I recognize, but who are you? <laughs> it's, just, it's like, you know, this is a great script. And it says, And the man in whom was the evil spirit leaped on them, mastered all of them, and overpowered them, so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. <laughs> I mean, you know, it, it's just, that is just crazy, right? Just the, that these guys, you know, they thought that, um, they could harness the power of God and use it for their own, right? And, uh, and so the Holy Spirit says, well, you have no authority over me. And, or excuse me, the this, this, uh, evil spirits are saying, you have no authority over me. And so then just kind of, you know, sent them uh, turn tail and run without any clothes. And, but go on. It says here, it says, um, and this became known to all the residents of Ephesus, both Jews and Greeks uh, and fear fell upon them all and the name of the Lord Jesus was extolled also many of those who were now believers came confessing and divulging their practices a number of those who had practiced magic arts brought their books together and burned them in the sight of all and they counted the value of them and found it came to 50,000 pieces of silver so that the word of the Lord continued to increase and prevail mightily. I wrote in my quiet time journal that day, I was just thinking about how, you know, when we have the spirit of God in us, he changes us. He changes our desires. We, you know, there is an effect, okay? Uh, and I mentioned this before, but it, this is not just some intellectual decision, you know, to, to receive Christ and, and put your faith in him. I mean, it is that, but it's more than that, right? When the Holy Spirit comes in you then, once you put your faith in him, you know, it's like he starts cleaning the house, right? And, 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 and thankfully, God is so patient with us, right? And he, he takes things as they come, and he'll bring things to our mind. I remember things that the Lord was, was showing me. The very first thing I remember was just my language, my language. I was this, you know, I wouldn't say I cussed like a sailor, but, you know, I was... You know, I, I was, I just was, I said things that just were not edifying, you know. Uh, but it, you know, and, and it's kind of what you would expect to hear from average Joe or Sue on the street corner or whatever, you know. Just, you're, that's the talk, right? It's not right, but that's it, okay? And, and so I remember God just kind of addressing that and, um, and that, Him helping me change those 
bad habits. Um, you know, other things were, um, well, to be honest, uh, I, I got rid of all the pornography I had. Uh, that all went out. Um, I wouldn't say that was the last time I ever had a struggle with that, but I'm saying he just said I knew that was to go. Okay. Um, there was music I was listening to that was not edifying either. I remember taking that down. Now, I did get some money out of that. I got to say, I did. I did. I was like, I got to use that money to buy. Actually, I used it to buy some Christian books. <laughs> I was like, I got I to gotta sell this junk and get me some good stuff with it. But I, and I say that to, to you like, um, I don't know what it is for you. But, but I want you to know, you know, when you put your faith in Christ, things are going to change. All right? And, and he's going to help you change. But what we need to do is that when he brings these things up, we don't push him back down. We cooperate with him. Uh, we, we cooperate with him. And, you know, this is so important, guys. When, when, you know, we were meant to not walk the faith alone. We were meant to walk together because we're going to need help in living, this, in living this supernatural life. We've been given the Spirit, but God has also given us the gift of brothers and sisters, okay? And so that when when the Holy Spirit does bring up to you things that need to be addressed, you will then have your uh, spiritual support system. And this is important because we, we also need discernment, okay? And sometimes we're not good at discerning our own stuff, <laughs> okay? Uh, you know, that's why counseling offices are full, <laughs> you know? We sometimes need somebody outside of our sphere uh, or like uh, of ourselves, particularly, and, and and you know if you've got the Holy Spirit and uh, and your brother and sister does too, you know we they can see things sometimes better than you can, especially if they're if they know you, right? All right, and, and so I'm saying all this kind of introduc- to introduction because some of the things we're gonna we're gonna hear today, you know, it's just it's a list of some things where it says, you know, well don't do this, don't do that, don't talk like this, and. But I want you to know, this is the, these commands in Scripture are coming from a, a place, and they're written to people who know Jesus Christ as their Savior. Okay, they have the Spirit of God, and therefore they have dwelling within them the power to uh, grow in grace and and victory over different areas that are that are mentioned here and that are called out by the Apostle Paul. Okay. And, and so I, I just want to throw that out there just in terms of, you know, th- this, is, th- this is a lifelong journey when you put your faith in Christ, and we are to be continually growing, all right? And, and, and we need, we, I was talking about this with somebody the other day, that, um, you know, in Hebrews, the book of Hebrews 10, verses 24 and 25, talks about let us, uh, let us consider how to stir up one another, Right to love and good deeds, and uh, the Holy Spirit will use another person sometimes to stir you up. Okay, and that's almost and that word there is like a cattle prodding. Okay, okay. And when I I grew up in the country, all right. Now you may not like this, but this is just reality. Okay, there was a dinner bell in my town. Okay, and I helped my buddy take their hogs there. Right, and we had a little. <laughs> to get the hogs to go where you want them to go. That's prodding. That's stirring up. That's what that word means, okay? So it doesn't mean just in Christendom, when we walk in fellowship with each other, we have the Holy Spirit. It's not all always just good feelings. Sometimes it's brother, sister, I got to talk to you about something. I love you, but I'm seeing this. That's stirring up. That's stirring up, okay? And don't be afraid of it, um, but that's what we need to do. So in this passage here we're talking about today, um, you'll notice several things. I'm going to really focus mostly on verses 29 and 30. Um, but here in verse 30 where it says, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit, notice that it says that, that you know the Holy Spirit is someone who can be saddened. The Holy Spirit is someone who can be saddened. Isn't that interesting? Um, and again, this kind of goes to, to kind of instruct us that who is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is not, you know, 
Uh, I know Doug mentioned this when he was uh, preaching not long ago, that he's, he's not some impersonal force, you know, that we call upon, uh, you know, to do our bidding or whatever. It, it, but he is actually, he is actually, as it says there, that he, he act, as a person, people grieve, right? Not, not objects or powers, you know, so to speak. Um, and so it's interesting, too, when you look throughout the Scriptures, there's all different ways you can see how the Holy Spirit sort of demonstrates, um, if you could, attributes of personality, uh, of personhood. Um, the Holy Spirit, in Acts chapter 5, as we learned, he can be lied to. You can lie to the Holy Spirit. Well, you know what happened in Acts chapter 5 when they lied to the Holy Spirit, don't you? Boom, somebody dropped dead. And then somebody else came in and lied to the Holy Spirit. Boom, they dropped dead. Wow, that's, that's incredible. But so, so you can see that just from that verse, that, okay, if you, you, don't, you don't lie to an inanimate object or some power. You lie to a person, right? Um, the Holy Spirit can be resisted, all right? Uh, he can be insulted, it says in Hebrews 10, 29. And on and on it goes. But you just need to realize this is kind of, this is more of one of those things. This is just something to know is that the Holy Spirit is a person, okay? The Holy Spirit is a person. He's not just some uh, impersonal force. He actually has the attributes of personhood, all right? And, and so now the other thing that we can see from this verse here is that, um, that the Holy Spirit is God. Okay, the Holy Spirit is God. And so it, where it says, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, okay? Um, now, you know, and some of some of you may have grown up in church. Some of you may realize, oh, okay. Well, I already knew that, okay. But but not everybody knows that, okay. Um, and this brings up a topic that's very hard to explain. <laughs> All right, you know, because well, Jesus is God. The Holy Spirit is God. God the Father is God. A Muslim would say we worship three gods, but we don't, okay? And this is the thing. And so let me just, um, there's no way we're going to hit the whole trinity here, okay? But I'm just saying that, you know, that word trinity is not used in the Bible, but it's observed. The concept of observed, and that is that there is, God is one in essence, but expressed in three persons. And I just want to take you to one place where we see all three persons kind of manifest, Okay? Um, so so what, you, what you need to know is that God is not like in three different forms, okay? You know, when I, when I was growing up, there used to be this uh, cartoon called the Wonder Twins. Anybody remember Wonder Twins? Activate. Activate, yes. Form of an ice cube or something. You know, they would take all these. And so they would, the, the, one of the dudes would just change form. Same person, different forms, right? Well, that's not what's happening with God. God doesn't come down and, okay, now I'm the Holy Spirit, and, or now I'm Jesus, and now I'm God the Father. You know, it's not like, you know, he's flipping the switch between three different modes. No, that's not it. God is actually, he, he is one, but expressed in three different persons. So let's go take a look at Matthew chapter 3, all right, in your Bibles here. So Matthew chapter 3, and we're going to look here in uh, Jesus' baptism. Down in verse 13. <coughs> Matthew 3.13, and it says, um, Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to John, this is to John the Baptist, to be baptized by him. Verse 14, John uh, would have prevented him, saying, I need, I need to be baptized by you. <laughs> you know, he knew who he was looking at. This is the Savior, right? And he says, Do you come to, do you come to me? But Jesus answered him and said, Let it be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And then in verse 16, it says, And when Jesus was baptized, immediately he went up from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending upon him like a dove. So you've got Jesus the Son, who is God, there in the Jordan, being baptized, comes out of the water. The Spirit is now, it says, descending upon him like a dove, and then it says, uh, and coming to rest upon him, and behold, a voice from heaven, 
who is God the Father, saying, this is my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased. So in these couple of verses, you have all three persons of the Trinity being expressed in the same scene, if you will, okay? And so, uh, again, that's, this, is, this is just um, to show you that, you know, we do worship one God, and certainly in the Old Testament, you read a lot of things, you know, there's the, the, the Shema, the Old Testament, you know, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, that kind of thing, that there, there was definitely a, an emphasis on the unity of God. But even in the Old Testament, when you, you see references, when God talks about himself using the plural, right? Let us make man in our own image, he says. And so, again, w- there's no way, there's no, by the way, there's no illustration that, that gets this, okay? There's no way to illustrate the Trinity to fully understand it. There, I mean, you can read about them online, but everything falls short. Um, but there are, there's one God expressed in three persons. That's just the way it is, right? Um, and, 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 you know, I, I think it's, it's good for us to realize we're not going to know how all this works, okay? But, if, but if I believe, and I, and I do, and our church does that, this is the word of God, the infallible word of God. And then, therefore, if it says that, so somehow that works. You know, I mean, some people don't like that, but it's, you know. Um, so, uh, we, you know, the Holy Spirit is God. That's, that's the point. But it kind of then brings up this whole aspect of, well, I thought there was one God. You know? Well, there is, but expressed in three persons. Okay. Now, um, this... Uh, Verse 30 also says, it says, and you were sealed. It says, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Uh, It says you were sealed by by the Holy Spirit for the day of redemption. And actually, if you go earlier in the book of Ephesians, take uh, go to chapter 1, so we can see another expression of the same idea. Ephesians 1, I think it's in verse 13 and 14. Again, we're looking at this idea of the Holy Spirit as being given to us, it says, as a guarantee or a seal, being sealed with the Holy Spirit. So it says, in him, uh, verse 13, Ephesians 1, 13, in him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him. This is what is important. You, you know, we, every person, we want every person to hear the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And then, but then it's up to them to believe it, right? So it's important to proclaim it, right? And then it must be received and believed. So he says, the gospel of your salvation, and you believed in him. Then it says, you were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, right? Again, there, when you become a Christian, you receive the Holy Spirit. And then it says, uh, you were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of, of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. We mentioned something about this last week, right? How the Holy Spirit actually is the one who will bring life to our mortal bodies, right? When Christ comes back, you know, we're, we're uh, if we're dead in the grave or whatever, then we, you know, uh, somehow the power of the Holy Spirit will bring our atoms <laughs> from wherever they are you know, I don't even know how that, I mean, how is that going to work? I mean, that's a whole nother thing. But anyway, you know, you think about that and, and how, so how he will give life to our mortal bodies, but then the Holy Spirit is also our guarantee. He puts us in, it's like a guarantee saying, I'm coming back for you and you and anyone who has the spirit within them. Linda and I, um, this past week, uh, on, it was on Tuesday, we went to a bike shop in, in, near the Clintonville area and we, we were looking at some bikes. And so it's like, you know, you can test drive bikes now just like you can cars. Although that's, you know, if you run off with one, I suppose it's a lot less to deal with. But before we were about ready to walk out the door and try the bikes, the guy says, oh, I'm going to need your driver's license as a guarantee. I'm like, well, that makes total sense, right? You can't have anybody running off with your bikes, you know. Uh, and so we left left my driver's license and you know why why do they do that you know they do that other places too well because they figure that little piece that little card is important to you and you're going to want to come back and claim that right uh it's you got to go through a lot of hoops to get another one of those right plus they know who you are and they can find you right (laughs) it's probably more the latter but it's important to you it's important to me like i don't want to have to go get another license you know who wants to go to the bmv and wait in line again you know nobody so so the Holy Spirit given to us as a guarantee, 
uh, that God, when, when Christ comes back, he's going to come back and claim those who are his. And his, the spirit is in all of his children, right? As a guarantee, as a seal. Now, I, I like that word seal uh, because it, it, it expresses permanence, doesn't it? A seal, right? Um, and, and there's, there's security when you put your faith in Christ. There's security in that. That when he gives us the gift of salvation, it's, it's, it's a permanent thing, right? We're sealed with the Holy Spirit. And so um, uh, in here, you kind of have the beginning of salvation and the end, if you will. You know, we oftentimes think of salvation as just a one-time event, right, an event. And, and it is that, right, when we put our faith in Jesus. Um, I was practicing, uh, or I, I had to practice for, for my men's little small group that I'm a part of, I had to practice giving my story about how I became a Christian in three minutes. And these guys are hardcore, all right? And, and, but they're good. And so I got to do that. And, I got, and, and, and doing that uh, kind of, it reminds me of what God did. And, 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 and it, but I reflect back on that day. It's like there was a time when I actually did transfer my trust in, in myself to get me to heaven because I thought I was a good guy, you know, that my good guyness was going to get me there. You know, it's like, I always thought, I always liken it like that. I always thought that salvation, you know, going up the pearly gates was going to be like a game show, so to speak. And, you know, it's like the, it's like the scales of justice. If you're good, outweighed your bad, you're in. And I'm like, oh man, I've hardly done anything, you know? I mean, pff, yeah, according to whose standard is the issue, right? Um, but that's not how it works at all. It just matters about, you know, um, ha- have you been washed by the blood of Jesus? Have you put your faith in him? Who are you trusting? What are you trusting in to get you to heaven? Uh, and that really was the question that was posed to me that I share in my story is somebody asked me, if I died tonight, do I know for sure I'd go to heaven? And I, as I thought about it, I thought, well, I'd like to think I would. I- I'm pretty sure I would, but I don't really know for sure. And so then started a quest on how can I know, right? And so... But, but that night, when I did place my faith in Christ and what he did, instead of thinking that I've got what it takes to get there, I transferred my trust to him, right? That was uh, when I was sealed with the Holy Spirit, okay? Uh, you know, lightning bolts didn't come down. I, I, some people have all kinds of different experiences, and that's fine, but I was just laying in my dorm room, <laughs> you know, uh, probably laying in my dorm room while my roommates were out there smoking weed. I mean, it was probably, this is the way it was. When I, I, I was in culture shock when I went to school. I was like, I was from a town of 500 people. Now, I knew there were drugs there, but I had no idea what they were, okay? Uh, and, and so, um, isn't it interesting how, how God, I mean, it was a fork in the road, right? And, and this is how God works so oftentimes, right? You, I mean, you might even be here uh, somebody invited you or, or you, came to, you come to some event and, and you see how that was a defining moment for you. And, and, and in, that be- in my bedroom that night was a defining moment for me. I was like, Lord, I'm either going to go this way or this way. And by your grace, you're pulling me this way. Right? And so that's where the Holy Spirit sealed me because I just put my faith in Christ. But then you need to, we need to see that he saves us for something future. That's our hope, right? Because you and I all know that um, because of sin in the world, because we live in a world that's broken because of sin, there's a lot of pain. There's a lot of suffering. Some of us experience that right now, right? And uh, even that pain and that suffering, in my mind, reminds me this is not the way it was meant to be. I read the Bible. This is not the way it was meant to be. No, God is going to restore all things. Okay? And so he is, he, he's sealing us for that day of redemption. Okay? So that day of redemption is the culmination of history. It's the culmination of our salvation. Yeah, there's a day when you put your faith in Christ and you are saved. At least I hope there is that day for you that you've done it. But then, but then there's a day that I'm being saved for something. Right? And that's a future with God in heaven. And the in-between time here, I'm trying to learn what God wants me to do. And we're trying to learn how to live it out so that to give him glory. That's the in-between time, right? And so 
but we're sealed for the Holy, with the Holy Spirit with the, for the day of redemption. All right, so those are just some things that we learn about the Holy Spirit. You know, uh, when we're, I just encourage you, when you're reading your Bible, start thinking about what do I, what does this tell me about God the Father? What does it tell me about Jesus the Son? What does it, what does this verse or verses tell me about God the Holy Spirit? I mean, if we, if we just kind of went in that, you'd learn a lot about who God is. Um, and and we, we would learn and be growing in the truth here. Now, Let's get down to the, to the crux of the matter, right? What grieves the Holy Spirit? So we've learned a few things about the Holy Spirit in, this, in just that one verse, verse 30. But what grieves him? You know, there are some, some things that sadden him. And so uh, there are several things I want to bring up here. Impurity in the church. You know, um, and where, where am I pulling these things from? Okay, well, <clears throat> when you read the book of Ephesians, right, and, and you get to chapter 4, which comes after chapter 3, right? Uh, right. So chapter 3, the first three chapters in Ephesians are very heavy on, on truth about God, right? Or, or doctrine, right? Or whatever. Truth about God. Learning, learning about our salvation and how someone is saved and all about what God has done for us. Lots of wonderful truth. But then, chapters 4 to 6, the, 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 the final three chapters, are basically like, okay, now that you know who you are, this is how you live. It's really practical, really practical. And so, so then in chapter 4, he talks a lot about unity, and he talks a lot about also about how we should um, put off things the way we used to do things before we came to know Jesus as Savior and put on our new life. It's almost like he said, okay, okay, okay you're a Christian now. Now, now uh, live like it. That's, that's, I mean, that's, that's, the, that's the cliff notes, right, of... of of chapters 4, 5, and 6. You're a Christian. This is who you are. You've been equipped, right? Uh, you've been getting everything that you need in Jesus Christ. Now, now here's, here's how you can now live this out, right? Live this out. And so, but one of the things he tells us to do is to just ab- abstain from sex, sexual immorality, right? And, and, he, and, and God ex- says, listen, um, that's not how you're to behave as a Christian, right? And so part of our growth in Jesus Christ is going to be learn how to put off those old ways and put on the new ways. And, and so um, impurity, uh, you know, well, who, who, is the whole, who is the Spirit called? He's called the Holy Spirit. <laughs> right? So if he's residing in us, which he is, he's, he's going to be grieved by impurity in our lives, right? So that, that just to me makes sense. That would grieve him, right? If the Holy Spirit's living in me, and I am pursuing a non-holy path in some area of my life, or right? That's going to grieve him. That's going to grieve him. Um, I think it's interesting too, and, and uh, I mean that it doesn't say that he's um, he's angry with me. I, I, don't, I mean, I'm not saying that the Holy Spirit wouldn't get angry, okay? But but I'm just saying that this verse, and you think about this. You know, if you're <clears throat> if somebody stole money from you or something, uh, came into your house and stole money, you'd be mad at them. But if your kid stole money out of your wallet, you'd be mad at first, but I think you'd be grieved too. You'd be grieved. You're like, why do you feel like you need to do that? Right? Uh, you know, I got a lot of resources <laughs> at our disposal if we can just talk about it here. You know, and so I just think about how that, that's so true of us is that, you know, we're supposed to, uh, as believers in Jesus, pursue a life uh, of purity in our thought and action, right? And so, again, that impurity is a, is a, a, is a big topic, but, but, but just saying that, you know, in, in the church too, corporately, a, a, as, a, as a group of believers, right? Uh, God doesn't want us to just um, turn the blind eye to, to saying, you know, oh, you know, if somebody's doing this over here, um, that's not right, that's in, it's not, it's not in alignment with the word of God. That's a clear right and wrong, not a gray area. We, should, we shouldn't let it slide, okay? Um, didn't we just hear a message about being my brother's keeper? Right? Didn't Doug? So we, we, yeah, it was great. It was a great series by this guy right here. And because and, we are our brother's keeper, <clears throat> right? We really are. And uh, <clears throat> if you're visiting today, that might, that's going to sound real scary to you. I totally get that. I, I totally get that, okay? Um, so, so here's what you need to know is that, you know, so 
a kind of relationship that does that takes time, right? Um, and, and so, uh, but I tell you what, there's something in every one of us that, that wants that. We want reality. We want to be real. We want, we want people to know us and to know other people on, on, a, on a deeper level, okay? And with that is going to come, uh, you know, call, calling things out in love, right? So, so impurity in the church, it grieves the Holy Spirit. Falsehood in the church, and, and actually we see that, right, in the, in the passage at hand, right? He says, therefore, in verse 25, Ephesians 4, 25, therefore, having put away falsehood, right, let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. He wants us to speak the truth to each other, right? Um, and, and, and in a loving way, right? We, we should be speaking the truth in a loving way. And so um, he doesn't like falsehood. But what do we do? <laughs> what do we do? You know, I, I would just, you know, if we're real with each other, if we're honest, we say, you know, a lot of times we kind of put forward that's we, we want people to see that we we, we kind of got it together, right? Like you know, uh, like you know, you know, I, I'm just a great mom. I'm a great dad. I got you know, just all go, got it going good. You know, I'm a, you know. Even though we wouldn't put word, those words to it, that's how the almost the persona we put forth, right? That's not truth. Um, you know, well, the Lord wants us to be honest. He wants us to be real. Right, and, and so, and, and that takes some guts, and say, you know, hey, I'm really struggling with this. Uh, I'm really, I don't know what to do with my kids, or I, I don't know what to do. You know, I don't know how to be a good husband. I don't know, you know, you know. And frankly, you know, you, you think about these different areas of our lives, these different hats we wear, right? If you're, if if you're a guy, maybe you're a husband. If you're married, you know, if you're, you're if you got kids, you're a father, or you're a worker, or, or vice versa. You know, mom. Uh, woman, uh, you know, uh, wife, different roles that we play, right? We, um, you know, some of us just didn't have good role models, <laughs> you know? Um, uh, some of us, by God's grace, we, we, we did, you know, but others of us did not, you know? Um, and and we really need to... Uh, you know, the, the, you, you see this this passage. You're really bringing together just that aspect of a community that speaks truth, a community that's seeking purity, right? And this is happening, right, as we are relating to each other, right? And so I, I just want I want to I want to encourage anybody here today that is to go beyond. Like if, if you've been coming around for a while, uh, to go beyond just sitting in the seats. Um, and there is definitely a phase where you will do that because you're checking it out, right? And so if this is a place that you feel comfortable with, that God might be saying, hey, this is, I think, maybe your church home, take that next step, right, and, and, and start to get involved uh, with a small group or, or serving in ministry or something where you, you can actually start rubbing shoulders with people because uh, where, where people can get to know you and you get to know them and, and so that uh, we can really be truthing in love. Right and learn how to live authentic uh, walk with Jesus. Okay, so so that's another way we can we can grieve the Holy Spirit. Let's see here um, if I can hit the right button. Okay, disunity in the church, um, and we see this again too in Ephesians, where he he really talks about you know you've got one Spirit, one Lord, right? One faith, one baptism. There's a real emphasis on unity, and so. Uh, it, we have this. The, we have that one spirit, right? That we all share, and uh, it really grieves the heart of the spirit of God when we're not, when, when we're infighting, when we're not united, right? And, and and unity does not mean uniformity, right? It doesn't mean that we all look the same, that we all have the same interests, you know, all this sort of thing. No, we have great diversity. We're supposed to within the body, right? But unity on the things that matter, right? And, and, and isn't it interesting, right, that in this passage here um, that, that we have, let me get back to, um, to that Ephesians. 
4 passage here, that down in there he says, let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, right? But only such as is good for building up as it fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. So what can promote unity? Speech. <laughs> what can promote disunity? Speech, <laughs> right? And so uh, our mouths should be an instrument of grace, right? Not of disunity. And, and so Paul's trying to, to really challenge uh, Christ followers in this because it grieves the Spirit of God when you're disunited. But what does promote unity? It, is, it says, let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, right? So, so we have to look at the negative here if we want to understand what we should be doing, right? So what, that word corrupting, you know what it means? It means rotten. <laughs> it means rotten, like a rotten apple, right? Do you know what happens when you put a rotten apple in with a bunch of other apples that aren't rotten? They become rotten, right? Our speech, if it's rotten, if it's corrupting, if it's, if it's not building up, it can really affect the body, the church. We don't really think about that. We're, we tend to be... Oh, maybe I'm just talking about me. I tend to think of just, it's me and my walk with God. No. What is the emphasis here in, in Ephesians 4? It's as, as about unity. It's about we are a part of something together. We are a, a local uh, group of Christians here, and we're tied together. What you do or don't do affects me, actually. That's really true. And, this, and it's true of our speech Right? It's true of our speech. That's what he's saying here. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up as it fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. This is, this is a power-packed verse because you think about this. Really, I, what, what I take away from this verse is that when I'm, when I'm with someone, when you and I are with someone, we should be, in a sense, kind of in our mind, sort of asking the Holy Spirit, Lord, what's needed here? What, what, what do they need to hear? What, what, what is needed? So that when I speak, I could actually give grace to them. I, you know, isn't that, isn't that amazing? That you and I could actually be like a conduit of God's grace. I mean, only God can do that. But you, you know, I bet you can think of times in your life when somebody spoke words that were life to you. I mean, it was, like, it was like life coming out of a mouth because it fed your soul in a way that you needed it, right? That's what he's talking about. He's saying, don't, don't have corrupting talk. He's saying, listen, instead, uh, build, say things that build up and that fit the occasion. So that's interesting. You know, sometimes, uh, you know, people are just, uh, they're really good at knowing their Bible and they got truth in their six shooters. You know, and so then when they see something that doesn't line up, they're like, Psh! you know, and it, there's no love in that, right? And, and sometimes it's okay. So it don't mean that you like forget the truth, but the truth sometimes needs to fit the right situation, right? That takes discernment. So maybe it says, okay, maybe something needs to be said, but in a different setting, right? In a different setting, in a different way, right? And, and so, because he says in that verse, he talked about it needs to fit, right? That's what he says. He says um, that, it, may, uh, that to, it needs to be, it says it is good for building up and fits the occasion, right? This is a mystery to me, but you know what? You and I, when we get together, whether it's a casual meeting uh, when we're out and about or whether it's a formal meeting or whether you're getting together for coffee to, to, to hang out, whatever, this, is our, this should be how we go into that. Lord, I'm not coming just to get. I want to really be a conduit through which your Holy Spirit can actually breathe grace into this person's life, right? Um, and so, so we, need to, um, we need to be careful what we say and how we say it and, and, and really somehow... The Holy Spirit is kind of like the governor, you know, the one that's, that's helping us know, is this the right time or is this not? And we're, gonna, we're not going to get it right all the time, right? We're not because we're still got, we're still sinful, you know. But, but I think the thing is, is that 
God glories, gets glory in, in using weak vessels to accomplish things like that. Life-giving speech, life-giving words that are truth-filled but love, filled with love, right? So then he says, there he says, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit um, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you along with all malice. Again, he's saying, these are the old things. The, you know, uh, we may still struggle with these things, but he says, we need to put these things away. These are ways that speech can, can kill a church. They can really make it be disunited, right? Slander and anger and bitterness, right? Instead, in verse 32, he, he puts on the positive. He says, instead, be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another. You know, maybe somebody needs to hear that today. Maybe somebody sitting here is, like, is withholding forgiveness from somebody, right? But if you're a follower of Jesus, you've been forgiven. You, you've, been, you've been cleansed from all your sin and all your offenses. How could you withhold forgiveness from someone? It says, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you, right? There's our example. And so, <clears throat> so all, all of these things here, these three things, and there, there's, there would be more we could, we could list off, but just thinking about this, impurity, falsehood, disunity, all those things grieve the Holy Spirit of God um, because he is the spirit of truth. We learn that he is the spirit of truth in Scripture. We learn that he is... He, uh, we have the same spirit, right? And so he's the spirit of unity, and he is the Holy Spirit. And therefore, um, impurity is, is something that would grieve his spirit. So I, I don't know how God's word today is, 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 is uh, resting on you, but um, let's pray together because maybe God wants you to do some business with him today, Okay. And, and, and don't miss the opportunity, right? Don't, don't miss the opportunity. If, he's, if, you, if you know he wants you to, to respond to something that's been pointed out today, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we are just so thankful um, for, for, for your very patient love towards us. Um, I, I'm so thankful for the truth there in Philippians chapter 1 that this says, He who began a good work in you, he'll, he'll bring it to completion on the day of Christ Jesus. And you know, you know we're not going to get it right, uh, all right, all the time. But we are on this trajectory so that it says that uh, when we see Jesus, we will be like him. And then it will be complete. And Lord, so today I just, I just pray, Lord, if there's uh, anyone here, maybe just this area of purity, has, has really spoken to you, Lord. I pray that you'd help them to, uh, to uh, gain ground in this area of pursuing holiness with you and through the power of your spirit and the truth of your word and maybe just the, 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 the fellowship of the saints, the encouragement that they need. And uh, we also just pray, um, Lord, that uh, for those that are really struggling, uh, maybe in the area of unity, maybe, maybe there's um, something where they're, they're really uh, at odds with someone and and they need to make peace. They need to make peace knowing that that grieves the Holy Spirit, that they're not united. It doesn't mean that we'll agree on everything, but um, on the things that really matter, we do need to agree, but on the things that, that are just matters of indifference, we just need to either maybe agree to disagree and, and in a sense, bury the hatchet there. Help us to be forgivers like our Savior's forgiven us, And, Lord, we just pray, too, just for our, our speech. Lord, I pray that uh, you would really bring to our mind when we're with each other the things that, w that we would even s say that need to be said, uh, words of life, uh, words that would build and not tear down. And, and so, Lord, we just, we just pray, God, use us in this way. This is a supernatural thing. This is something that we could not do on our own. And so, Lord, we pray, use us in this way. Lord, help us to grow in our understanding of the Holy Spirit and how he works in us, even to prompt us to say things, to do things, 
to promote the unity within the body of Christ. Lord, we need your help to grow in these things. But we want you to be glorified. Help us. In Jesus' name we pray.